Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 9th of January of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we're going to start with Solidar. This Solidar, as you know, uh, it's maybe the third or the fourth day or in a row of very heavy clashes inside the town, inside the central on the western part of the town. The Russians stormed this area and during the day they achieved a lot of success in this area, so let's discuss. But before we discuss the uh, latest update about this, the situation on the ground, I would like to discuss with you one important icon on this map, the most important icon, I believe that this situation determined the entire destiny of Solidar. Um, to, yesterday in the evening or maybe tonight at night uh, we received a very interesting update I believe that that was the first update on this map and the, uh, when if you are able to follow the Russian uh, channels the Russian sources you will see that uh, the Russians call the situation as the best uh, ever a piece of news in the morning they might ever believe to have or something like this and I'm talking about this icon as you can see there is an arrow there is a green flag the arrow shows that the uh, 61st mechanized brigade that were deployed in uh, the, in Solidar or at least in some part of Solidar took a decision to leave their positions there is a very interesting description under this icon and the Russian sources are saying that the commander uh, the head of this brigade, 61st Brigade, yes, in the evening, took a decision to move his brigade from this town. And the thing is that he asked his soldiers to do this in the silence and not to like uh, to tell other brigades that located in this town and i'm talking about 17 tank brigade we discussed this brigade yesterday i'm talking about the uh, last left parts of 128th brigade of 46th brigade and so on who were deployed in this town as well so this commander took a decision and he asked his soldiers to start evacuation immediately and as fast as possible uh, he asked to do this during the night and what, I'll repeat one more time to do this in a silence like mode not to tell anybody else about this decision and I believe that this situation is the most important because uh, I believe that soldiers in Solidar who dies every single second in this town the only thing that they expect they wait is the order to step back and to leave the town they don't care about this town believe me they don't care about in ukraine the only thing they care is their lives their families their relatives and their families and so on and the only thing they want is to survive and the only thing they expect and wait is to receive an order to step back and imagine yourself like a battle gun of fight heavy clashes a lot of people are dying a lot of artillery and shelling and at some point of this time of this mass of this balagan you see you understand that there is a brigade in the entire town who received an order to step back i'm talking not about two or three soldiers i'm talking about thousands of soldiers of 61st mechanized brigade imagine yourself there is a big building on the first floor there is a 128th brigade on the second floor some uh, mobile parts of 17th tank brigade on the third floor there is a, there are soldiers from 61st brigade and they're sitting in one building trying to defend this entire area and at some point of time they understand that one brigade start evacuation and of course they're all friends they're brothers in arms and I believe that soldiers from 61st Brigade reported about, told them about this order to step back and so on. And I believe that everybody were surprised. I, I don't know what happened next. I don't know what, uh, if this situation paid such a big role in the entire battle for Solidar, I don't know. But later, few hours later, we got at least four important updates. And the most important one is that the Russians started heavy clashes around the central part of Solidar, around the town council. So as you can see, this middle part of Solidar, this is area is very far from the north, from the residential area we discussed yesterday. This uh, town council located very far from the south, from this railroad station, railroad arcade. This uh, area located very far from the mined field on that located on the east from Solidar. So what did happen? So as you can see, uh, something interesting, something very big happens in Solidar. And as we can see, the Ukrainians are stepping back. They're not leaving. They haven't left yet. 
they still try to hold this position as far as much as possible furthermore today Zelensky reported and announced about upcoming reinforcement that uh, he's planning to hold this town furthermore uh, the Russian sources are saying that Zelensky gave an order to Zaluzhny the head of the Ukrainian army to hold Solidar as long as possible to hold Solidar until summer until my bad until spring um before the ukrainians are able to start their own greatest counteroffensive operation so i can't i don't understand how the zelensky is going to do this maybe just the games between the head of army and the president and so on and uh, the, the zelensky will be able to use this case to blame the head of army and to dismiss him or something like this i, I don't know maybe it's some kind of speculation but anyway there is there are very heavy clashes inside of the town and as we can see the entire front line collapses or maybe um, the entire front line have been already collapsed by the russians and now and soon we are going to receive more updates about stepping back and retreating of the ukrainian army but when talking about 7 pm of local time uh, there are no updates about this there are still heavy clashes there are no more um, piece of news about the central part of solidar so let's wait a little bit i believe that if the Russians were able to penetrate the Ukraine defense orders and to get the central part of Solidar, I believe it's we can start counting minutes, hours before entire Solidar is going to fall, or at least this residential area, and the Ukrainians will be forced to step back in direction of this railroad rocade and to try to defend, or not even to defend, but to stop and to slow down the Russians in the western part of Solidar. But this is not the only important data about today. Uh, let's move. Mm, ah, uh, let's move one more thing about Solidar. One more thing about Solidar. As you can see, it, and it is very important, and I believe that we need to know this and we need to understand and to analyze for further battles in Ukraine. As you can see, according to the Russian sources, furthermore, they managed to publish video uh, confirmation of clashes in, uh, around the uh, city council. Uh, of course, one thing to tell, but another thing to show the improvements, and there was improvements from the central part, so it's not like speculation. There are real heavy clashes inside of this town, and the question is how did the Russians manage to get inside of Solidar, inside of Central Park. Um, when talking with, about some other military experts on the Russian side, they're still saying that the Russians couldn't penetrate the defend orders or to establish control over residential area on the north. So the front line on the north is as you can see right now. There were no updates about the penetration of the Russians uh, in this from the south part. Furthermore, the Ukrainians published a video dated to the 8th of January of the Ukrainian tanks who were moving along the road and attacking with the tanks the um, east part of Solidar. So there were no penetration from the south. The only possible way to attack uh, Solidar is the middle one through the minefield, as we discussed. And the second direction that the Russian might use to attack the central part of Solidar is uh, cemetery. As a result of that attack, they managed to take control over cross and to enter the central part of Solidar, and they managed to pass by the mine fields that located on the east part from the central part of Solidar. And this is very important. And as you can see, sometimes uh, you want to be a good person in the war. You don't want to like to have any deal with the cemetery with such things, but your enemy might use this and this situation may play a significant role in the favor of any of the parties now let's talk about bakhmut itself as you can see today we receive uh, also two important stars two important icons that located on the um, north of bakhmut and the north of podgorodnia as soon as we receive updates about the fights in the central part of uh, solidar uh, the same time we receive another three updates about paraskovievka krasna gara and oputna the town that located in the south and the Rus some russian sources were saying that the russians managed to enter inside of Krasnogora and Paraskovivka. Furthermore, some Russian sources were saying that the Russians are very close to establish final control over these two towns. Uh, let's return back to the Western sources map just to update to understand the towns I'm talking about. So we know that um, during the previous uh, 24 hours, the Russians established control over Podgorodny and they increased their continued pressure. As you can see, the Western sources map show the arrow of Russian attack in, uh, near Krasnogora. So if we update this map according to updates we received, the Russians established control 
over something like this. So they got control over uh, Podgorodnia, they established control or they are very close to establish fire con real physical control over Krasnogora and over Paraskovyevka. To tell the truth, it's highly unlikely that the Russians established control over these two towns like Krasnogora and Paraskovyevka and later in the evening there were a few sources who confirmed that the Russians haven't entered but they are very close to do this. So. Now we can say that the Russians just established fire control, maybe there are some commandos and scouts in this year, maybe there are heavy clashes at this moment, who knows, but I can't say and nobody still can't confirm about 100% control over Krasnogora and Paraskovivka. But the only thing that uh, every single Russian military experts agreed on is that the Russians managed to establish fire control, real fire control over the road between Solidar and Bakhmut. And we can say that today the 9th of January is the first day when the road between Bakhmut and Solidar was cut off. And today is the first day when we can say that the road between Bakhmut and the most important Seversk was cut off as well. The Russians have real fire control with artillery the distance between this road and there is just one road between these two areas of course that we can do a very big hook but uh, when talking about and now it's the only safe road to support and supply Seversk and now we understand that there may be a lot of problems in Seversk and maybe the Ukrainians will be forced to step back from this town of course if the Ukrainians are not able to stop the Russians or to slow down them in Solidar and I believe they are not able to do this because the soldiers in Solidar are very tired from the Ukrainian side and um, situation for them is very critical and I believe that this is the reason why the Western countries like the United States of America, United Kingdom, France, Germany started discussion about supplying supporting of Ukraine of heavy armored vehicles. This is not the reason that they want to do this because uh, they want to help and support. They see, I believe, the intelligence of these countries understand the real picture in Ukraine. They, uh, at some point of time, the Western countries understood that the Ukrainians right in front of being collapsed completely. And then if they want to con continue this war, I'm talking about the Western countries, if they want, they need to start support immediately. Furthermore, today, as you know, the Pol Poland announced about creation about another division on the borders with Belarus that will be uh, reinforced with the uh, um, uh, Abrams tanks and K2 tanks that produ that produces uh, by uh, Korea. So as you can see, the situation is very critical for the Ukrainians. Uh, the collapse of the front line might happen at like every single moment. Nobody knows what's going to be next. If there, but anyway, if the Russians continue the pressure. We can start counting days before this entire area is going to collapse. Now let's uh, discuss one more time Paraskovivka and Krasnogora. The Russians reported that they, they are very close to establish fire, uh, real control. There is a railroad rocade, there is a road rocade, there is a water barriers. It's not an easy job, so this is the reason I don't believe that the Russians have already established. I believe that they have, maybe they have entered the south of Krasnogora, maybe they have some fire control over these blocks and not the, maybe they have a real sniper control over the roads that connects uh, Bakhmut and Solidar. Anyway, the situation is critical and I believe that in a day or in two the Russians will be able to develop this bridgehead and to make this like a uh, very powerful fortification, like the base for the next offensive operation along the T of MO3 road. Because the main reason, the main value of this area is MO3 road that the Russians will use to develop their offensive operation in direction of Slavansk. When talking about Donetsk front line, according to the Russian sources, during the previous 24 hours, the Ukraine lost around 80 soldiers and something around 8 armored vehicles. And I'm talking about the losses of Ukrainians that were dealt by the Russian army, not by Wagner's. The real num number of Ukrainian forces, uh, losses of Ukrainian forces in battles with Wagner's, nobody knows this number. But I believe it's thousands of people and maybe hundreds of people per day and thousands per week or something like this. I believe that uh, maybe in the future we will, uh, d these numbers will, will be um, uh, uh, we will we will be given these numbers, but for now this is like uh, this is a fog of war. These numbers are covered by fog. When talking about uh, Severus front line, the Ukrainians, the Russians continue holding the Ukrainian army on the fr on the north front line by attacking with artillery, trying to destroy their artillery systems and so on. And as a result of the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost a few artillery systems in this area. They lost their raiders uh, near Verkhnikamyanska and around, as we discussed, in Liman front line around 60 soldiers and, and uh, on Kupinsk front line around 50 soldiers. 
furthermore, when talking about Vrishna, the Ukrainians lost one commandos and scouts in this area. I believe that uh, it's just the regular fights on the front line. Now we are moving to Donetsk front line. And as you can see today, we received a lot of interesting updates from the Donetsk front line as well. And uh, when talking about the air in the north, as you can see, two flights were shut down and another radar was shut down as well. Now let's talk about Ugledar area. Today, uh, during the day, we received um, two interesting updates from the Russian sources. The first one we received from the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation and uh, the Russians are saying that uh, during, not even during, but uh, today the Russians started movement on Uglidar front line under the protection and under the cover of artillery and air defense systems and they started their movement in direction of Uglidar. This was the first update and of course uh, we have a lot of interesting updates from um, Solidar uh, at the same on the same wave on the same spirit the Russians maybe wants they want to join the battles they want to push because they understand that the entire Ukraine front line started collapsing and maybe you need to make just one push and in the next in the next months um, the Russians will be somewhere near Lvov or Kiev who knows who knows everything might happen and later during the day we receive a lot of interesting updates from the soldiers and officers on the ground in Uglidar and they're saying that Ukrainians accumulate a very powerful fist in the area of Uglidar. Very powerful fist. The Russians did the same. They collected very powerful fist in the area of Uglidar brought from the south. And also he's saying that both armies are very powerful. They are very big with a big number. The weather is perfect to start broad frontline attacks because the weather is perfect. I'm talking about the minus temperature and about the situation on the ground, right? And there are very powerful and heavy artillery duels all along the front line in the south of Ukraine. Everybody are ready, but the thing is that both armies wait when another army is going to start offensive operation. And maybe we'll see when talking about Uglidar, I don't know, like close combat between two armies that took a decision to start movements one on another. So both armies will start attack. It will be like wall on wall, broad front line uh, against broad front line or something like this. Uh, but I believe that maybe this is the most and this is the final or maybe the most important, uh, the real uh, offensive operation from the Russian side during the uh, this winter campaign because of course we understand if the Russians are able to take Uglidar they will be able to penetrate everything on the north and uh, the, the Ukrainians will be able to stop them just near Pakrovsk or something like this from the Ukrainian side we understand as well if the Ukrainians ever wants to start offensive operation in direction of Militopol, Takmak in, in direction of Zaporozhye, Zaporozhye power plant first of all they need to cut connection between Russia and the south of Ukraine by attacking the direction of Militopol with everything they have just one purpose to stop and to secure the flanks and if the Ukrainians are able to secure the flanks furthermore I'm not saying that Ukrainians are going to attack Militopol from one side from another side they will start movements in direction of Militopol and Crimea not I'm not saying like this I'm trying to say that this is the winter campaign and the winter, com winter campaign is not the campaign that will determine the entire war and the entire battle in, in, or in uh, on the territory of Ukraine. No, the winter the main purpose and the main goal of winter campaign is to develop your tactical position. It will be very nice if you are able to develop your strategic position. So the Russians during the winter campaign want to take Bakhmut Solidar to penetrate this area just for one purpose: to achieve operational square before spring and summer campaign and if the Russians are able during the winter take Bakhmut Solidar during the spring and summer they will be we will see the battle for Slavyansk Kramatorsk and maybe for Liman as well the same situation for the Ukrainians they are not able to take or to get as close as possible to Crimea during the winter or to ruin the Russian army no the only thing the Ukrainians are able to do is to develop their tactical position before the um, greatest spring campaign of 2023. 
and what they are they can do they can attack in direction of Mariupol maybe not even to get inside of Mariupol but to cut the railroads and in many many other roads ports there is a see there is a railroad rocade there is a crosses just to cut this area and not to allow the Russians to supply and support south of Ukraine from the mainland from through the Donetsk People Republic because we know we know we understand if the Ukrainians are able to cut this area, this to secure the flanks as close as possible to Mariupol, uh, then the Ukrainians, we know this, the only thing they need is to cut the Crimea bridge, to destroy Crimea bridge one more time. And from this very moment, the entire Crimean South Ukrainian army, Russian army, will be encircled completely. And the only possible way to support this town, this area, using the ships and, I don't know, something like this, and nothing more. Furthermore, don't forget that when talking about the uh, latest uh, uh, supply package from the Western countries, the United States of America provide them a lot of interesting weapon, a lot of interesting rockets, missiles, and those missiles that the Ukrainians are able to use to attack the uh, naval targets and something like this so now the if the ukrainians let's say during the winter period attack in direction of Militopol, yes they will be able to develop but they won't be able to solve the main issue to secure the flank but when talking about this area they can do this and the only thing they need just to develop at least a little bit and believe me this uh, back is enough for the ukrainians to reduce the Russian possibilities. Don't forget about Mariupol. I believe that there are a lot of people who still support the Ukrainians and they're just uh, sitting there and wait when the Ukrainian comes and they will raise and they'll make their own strike or something like this. Of course, we'll see. But anyway, the main winter battle is up to begin and maybe tomorrow or the day after we're going to see another great war another great battle and this is going to be the battle not between the mercenaries or volunteers from wagner's this is going to be the battle between the real russian army and the real ukrainian army and i believe that is we're going to see this somewhere in the south and that's it for today military summer channel reminds you can the many violence in ukraine thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes join my patreon have a good day bye bye